Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here, my name is Francesco. I make minimal and micro house music as the still noise and as you can see videos on YouTube. In this video, I want to show you a few basic things about how I use reverb in my tracks. And to do that, I will use a new and very, very unique uh, reverb plugin by Isotope called Neoverb. Let's get it started. Reverb has always been one of my favorite effects because I like how different reverb types can set different moods for the same piece of music. So when Plugin Boutique, which is sponsoring this video, asked me to try out the Neoverb by Isotope, I couldn't say anything but yes. Now, this video is divided in two sections. In the first part, I will show you Neoverb, its main features and why it's so different from other reverbs. In the second part, I want to show you my approach when it comes to reverb for my tracks and how I keep it simple. Here I've already prepared three loops, one uh, synth loop, one hi-hat loop, and one drum loop. Very nice ones. Now let's open the new verb on the first synth loop. The first thing that catches your eye is this shape here. This is a blend tool that allows you to blend together three different types of reverb. Up to the top, we have the early part of the reverb, the so-called early reflections. What are early reflections? The early reflection is the sound that arrives to your ear after it bounces on no more than two walls. So for example, out of my speaker, onto my side wall, and then back to my ear. That's an early reflection. On the lower corner, we control the tail of the reverb, so what comes after the early reflection. And in this case, all the way to the left, we have a plate type of reverb. All the way to the right, we have a hole type of reverb. Let's start now from a preset, because this plugin has nice presets, so instrumental. And for this sound, I will take this synth depth. So let's hear how it sounds. Quite nice already. So let's move this dot around to find the nice blending of, of the three reverbs. Hole, chamber. I want this to be a room so I can change it here. And I want to shorten the length. Early reflections. This reverb is so nice. Maybe I want a more spacey one. Let's adjust the dry wet. Super nice. Now, if I want to make some type of change on this reverb, I can go here. I can change the type of reverb from plate to chamber to room. Same here from hell to chamber. I can adjust the decay time and the size of the room just by moving these controls here. But if you want to go further, if you want to have more control on the, on the reverb type, you just open up this window and here you can find all the classical controls uh, for reverbs. So time, size of the room, diffusion, dumping, and so on. Now, if you don't know what these parameters do, I linked in the description a very nice article on Isotope blog where they explain all these parameters which are valid for every reverb plugin that you will try in the future. So uh, take a look, it's very interesting. They also explain the difference between a room reverb, a plate reverb, a chamber reverb, a whole reverb. These are very interesting things to know before 
starting to use a reverb. And now I want to show you the side of the window. The pre-delay is the gap between the direct sound and the first reflection, but what interest, interests me more is this smooth control. Just take a listen to this sound. As you can hear, it has very strong transients, and these transients hit very hardly the reverb. With this smooth parameter, we can smooth this transient and make them gentler. Without. With. Now, the second really interesting part of NeoVerb is this section down here. You can see we have a pre-EQ, which is already set in some way because of the preset that we used. And this pre-EQ is uh, affecting the dry signal before it gets affected by the reverb. The reverb EQ is an EQ on the wet signal, so on the reverb sound. In every video about reverb that I've seen, the sound engineer was telling about how in important it is to treat with an EQ, the dry signal before it gets into the reverb, and then the reverb sound, the wet signal. But it's something that I always struggle to do because I was not sure of doing the right thing. I was afraid of messing it up. So at the end, I never did it. NeoVerb is provided with an artificial intelligence algorithm capable of listening to the dry signal before it, can, it goes into the reverb and attenuating those frequencies that could create problems, that could uh, sound bad when the reverb is applied. So it applies an EQ that you can control, and then it analyzes also the reverb, the wet signal, comparing it with the dry one, and also there it attenuates these, the, the reverb frequencies that can cover and clash with the dry signal. You can also compare the wet signal of one channel with the dry signal of another channel. The only thing is that you need an isotope plugging also on the other channel because they are sort of communicating between them and so in this way they can analyze each other. Let's try it out with, on this synth sound. So if I press auto cut here, it says waiting for audio. So let's hit play. And now he's listening. It suggests me a uh, attenuation curve here. If I go up to 200%, we can see that it increases the attenuation. Wow. The difference is huge and it makes it way better than before. Let's now try the reverb EQ. So we select dry versus wet. So if I hit play, you can see a lighter color in the background here, which means there are some frequencies that could clash with the dry sound. So let's hit a mask. And it says no significant masking detected. So it means that it's not it's not such a problem. Now moving on, let's work on the hi-hats and I want to show you another great feature of NeoVerb, which is the Reverb Assistant. So let's hit on here and we go to this window, which is a helper for choosing the reverb for our piece of music. So let's hit play. So with style, you basically increase the decay time. For hi-hats, I like to have a small room. Then here we have different tones, which are basically a different combination of diffusion and dumping. So clean, dark, bright, airy. Now, if I hit next, it listens and it look if there are some masking situations between the dry signal and the wet signal. And that's what the plugin 
suggest to us as a reverb. And that's it for the hi-hats. For the drum loop, I want to try some more creative reverb type. So. And let's look for a good preset here. So. That's it, that's it, I want this. Now you know all the main features of this reverb. Let's go now in one of the tracks I'm working on and see how I would apply Neoverb on my case, my personal case. So when I set reverbs in my own tracks, I always try to keep it simple. And that means not having more than two types of reverbs. One on the drums, which is usually a shorter decay reverb, and one on everything else, which is longer. Unless I don't want to use a specific reverb on a certain instrument, I use return tracks to put reverbs on. And that's because since reverb plugins are quite heavy on CPU, that helps me to keep the number of reverb plugin low, because I just need one for all the instruments and one for the drums. Now let me show you a project I'm working on. It's a remix for my friend uh, Ali Demir, uh, which will be out on the label Totoyov. The way I set reverbs on my drums is using the internal send return of drum racks. So this is the place where you put effects. I'll put the neoverb on it. And now as you can see, you have this send a volume. So you decide the amount of direct sound to send in parallel to the return track where you have the effect. Since I want to have a an idea of what the reverb will sound. I will put first the reverb on the main channel, so not on the return track, but on the drum track. So let's use the reverb assistant. I'm, I'm lowering a little bit the low frequencies on the dry sound before it enters the reverb. I don't like low frequencies to be on the reverb, so I will lower down both on the pre-EQ and on reverb EQ low frequencies. Okay, once I've set this reverb, I will take it and drop it into the return effects panel, set the dry wet to 100% when you use the effects on the return track, and now I will send my instruments to the reverb. And I found a sweet spot of the send volume between 35 and 20. Because if I go beyond 20, I start to have the volume of the river too loud. Maybe it's a little bit too long for my taste, so I will shorter the decay time a little bit. On the second drum rack that I have, I want to have the same reverb because I want that drums to be in the same room, not in different spaces. So I will simply copy this new verb from here to the other drum rack here. And 
And now the second type of reverb, as I told you, I use it on everything else. So basically on pods, synths, uh, effects, everything that is not drums or bass. So now let's set the reverb, the everything else reverb, as I like to call it. And to do that, I will just throw a new verb on this uh, return track A. So in this case, I want to set it through a preset and then I will use the analyzer to add uh, the pre-EQ and the reverb EQ. To choose the right reverb preset, I want to use first this um, synth track that I have here. And then I will start adding other instruments just by sending volume to the return track from them. So for the return track on all the sounds, we'll use uh, a sort of space emulation. Okay, this could be a nice starting point. I will add just a little bit of low frequencies. I want so much high frequencies, so I put it to zero. Nice. Just this one, I want it a little bit shorter. Okay, I think I think it's okay. Okay, so let's lower the volume that I'm sending. And let's put this to a hundred percent. So this is dry. And this is the wet with the return reverb. It's perfect. Like it. Now let's start adding the other sounds. So for example, I have this synth here. This is already reverbed in the preset. But nice. So warm. What else? Guitar. That's it for now because the other sounds are percussions. I will have to create another uh, return track with the same delay as the drum racks, but I have I have some single drum single drum track uh, to send to the reverb, so I will need another return track. But for now, that that's enough. Let me see. Okay, I already sent this to the reverb. So if now I press solo on the new verb return, I can hear all the different sounds, which mixes with the dry sounds. Maybe it's still a little too long, so. If you want to lower the overall volume of the reverb, you just need to lower down the uh, volume of the return track. Now let's run the analyzer for the pre-EQ. We have some corrections applied. And that's basically it.
That's it, so that's how I set the reverbs. One reverb for the drum, one for everything else. And if I need some more uh, creative reverbs, I will apply them to the single tracks. In this case, I don't need uh, I don't need it for the moment. I will see when I finish the track, but as you could see in the previous section of the video where, it applied, where I applied it to the drum loop, uh, it was really nice to give that very very particular effect with the reverb so it's definitely worth it to go through the presets and try out things that you never tried before because sometimes it ends up with something very very nice okay guys so this was neoverb this is how isotope put artificial intelligence on a reverb plugin and this is how i use reverbs in my own projects if you want to try neoverb you can download the trial version from plugin boutique website and if you want to buy it there's a 50 euros discount until november 7th so definitely check it out Thanks for watching the video, I hope you liked it. Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers guys, bye bye.